We are getting real today. Awesome interest rates combined with little supply has created a lot of competition in the market. We are going to be talking through six truths that you need to hear as a first time home buyer. And some of these are going to surprise you. I'm Nicole Nark, Arkansas real estate broker, and welcome back to my channel with videos to help you find your way home. Let's jump right into it. The first truth I wanna share with you guys. So there is a big misconception around this. You may see advertisements for first time home buyer programs and you may see all sorts of grants out there. You are not entitled to assistance with your purchase just because you are a first time home buyer. As a first time home buyer, you are still in the same boat as any repeat home buyer. In fact, most of these assistance programs that may be able to help you with a down payment or closing costs are also going to have their own unique set of criteria that you have to qualify for in addition to the ones that you had to meet in order to get the loan. Criteria for these certain programs sometimes include things like credit score requirements, income limits, so now that you've heard this truth, moving forward, I want you to be aware that there are no programs out there that are specifically given to you just on the basis that you are a first time home buyer. You will have other criteria that you definitely may be able to meet in order to qualify for those programs. But if you walk into a bank and say, hey, I'm a first time home buyer, what can you give me? they may look at you like you're crazy. Truth number two is that buying a house is a lot different in real life than TV and social media make it seem. I'm not gonna lie to you, sometimes buying a house involves tears or heartbreak if your offer wasn't accepted. Regardless, even if the process has been pretty smooth, there is going to be a heck of a lot of work that you are going to have to be putting in in order to buy a house. First and foremost, the application to get a home loan can be tedious. You're constantly having to possibly supply documents to your lender. With this market being so competitive, you're going to have to be ready to jump on houses quickly, as well as potentially make offers on multiple properties if your first offer is not accepted. Then once your offer is finally accepted, you have to navigate the home inspection and anything that could possibly come up in that. The reason that I bring all of this up is because the home buying process takes a lot of work and it's not for the faint of heart or people who are just on the fence about buying their first home. So of course, it's super exciting to watch TV shows on HGTV like House Hunters, where you look at a few properties, you think about them for a week, talk to your realtor over dinner, and then make an offer and magically your offer is accepted. Or it's very easy to compare yourself and your situation to people you see on social media who are throwing confetti and popping champagne bottles in front of their homes. All of that excitement comes along with the home buying process too. But just so you know, don't get discouraged along the process if you have to put in a lot of work. Sometimes tears are normal and part of the process, but I guarantee you, if you have set your mind to a goal of home ownership, you can make it through. Truth number three, your credit and employment can be checked and verified multiple times throughout the transaction. So keep in mind, if you decide to purchase a car or finance a refrigerator or some new furniture for your house, all of those things can affect your home purchase. You do not want to run the risk of applying to finance a couch for your house and then not having a house to put your couch in or I've even seen it before, believe it or not, buying a car directly impacts your credit score and your debt to income ratio. So I have seen it where home buyers will go out, they'll buy a new car while they're under contract on a home, and then 
they're gonna have to be living in their car because they just kicked their debt to income out of qualifying range for their home loan. If you decide to purchase a car or finance a refrigerator or go buy a bunch of furniture on a furniture store credit line, these things will hurt your deal. Nowadays, due to employment varying dramatically, lenders are also checking your employment status several times throughout the loan process. So they are going to check with your employer in the beginning of the process. And I have even seen lenders call your employer the day of your closing to make sure that you are still employed at your same job. So don't try to skip out early once you've filled out your loan application, but before closing. Don't make any changes to the way that you get paid if possible. If you decide to switch from salary to hourly or vice versa, this can definitely affect the amount that you get paid each month. And sometimes, even though you'll be making more in the long run over the year, it will be less monthly than you may be used to. So if you make changes like that while you were under contract on a home, that can also skew your debt to income ratio and mess with your loan application and your ability to close on a house. Truth number four, student loans can affect your deal big time. The important thing to know is that if you have student loans, even if they are in deferment or you have not started paying on them, lenders will still use them in your debt to income ratio. I see this kill pre-qualifications more than anything else. Because if you have high student loan balances, even if you're not responsible for paying on them yet, a small fraction of that balance will need to be calculated in your debt to income ratio. For most loan types, lenders will need to take 1% of your total student loan balance and allocate that to your monthly debt payments. So for example, if you have $40,000 in student loan debt, they would take 1% of that, that would be $400 incorporated as a debt into your debt to income ratio. But let's say that you just graduated pharmacy school and you have $120,000 in student loan debt. Now you can see that if we take 1% of that, which is $1,200, that's a huge chunk of your debt to income ratio that's coming specifically from student loan payments. And because that is such a large portion, potentially taking up your income, you may not get qualified for much money. So what you can do is get on a repayment schedule. As long as you are on a fully amortized repayment schedule for your student loans, if that payment is lower than that 1% that they have to take into consideration if you're not paying on your loans, then they will use whatever your actual payment is. This can definitely come into play for any of you who may be on an income-based repayment plan. Truth number five, you do not actually have to have perfect credit in order to buy a house. FHA loans, which allow you to buy with as little as three and a half percent down, can start at a 580 credit score. I mention this because many of you have contacted me thinking that your 650 credit score isn't gonna be good enough for you to apply and get a home loan. When in reality, many lenders can start right at that 580 for small down payment loans. Additionally, you do not need to let your exact credit score stop you from applying for a loan. You know how if you use any of the Credit Karmas or Credit Sesame apps, they will put your credit score on like a little range to where maybe it's good or fair or excellent. Lenders will use those same categories. So if you're thinking about applying, but you're hesitant because you wanna to try to boost your credit score even more, don't let that hold you back because unless you are right on the brink of going into the next higher level, that's really the only time that your interest rate that a lender would give you would change dramatically. So unless you're right on the cusp of going into like a new credit score zone, even better one, just go ahead and apply. And the last one, truth number six, if my opinion means anything to you, this is the most important one. 
Just because you get pre-approved for it does not mean that you can realistically afford it. And let me explain why. When filling out loan applications, lenders are going to look at your pre-tax income. When giving you an estimate as to what your monthly payment is, they're still using that gross pre-tax income. This is a problem because that's not the money that you have to spend. And after taxes, it's quite a bit less that actually comes to your pocket. So let's look at an example. Let's say that you make $40,000 per year. In reality, after taxes, that comes to $32,328. So lenders are anticipating that you will get $3,333 a month because they are using your pre-tax income. But in reality, after taxes, if you make $40,000 a year, you're most likely coming home with around $2,694. That is a large difference of money that you would have to work with. If lenders are going to work with the figures that would be as if you're taking home over $3,000, they're going to be able to pre-approve you for a higher dollar amount. So it's very, very essential that whenever a lender tells you what you are pre-approved for and what that monthly payment is, that you think to yourself, can I realistically pay this payment with my post-tax income that comes to actually my bank account every month? Or will I be overstretching myself? Because in this example, that's a difference of $639 a month. So which of these truths surprised you? Let me know in the comments below. Regardless of where you are in the United States, if you are looking to start the home buying process, I'm happy to get you connected with a great agent in your area. If you are still a little unsure about the buying process, check out this video that I made explaining from start to finish the 12 steps that you need to take in order to make home ownership a reality. I will see you in the next video.